history is littered with a long line of lovable but angry men. I'm as bad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore. I'm going to give you a damn good dressing. Finally, my stupidity pays off. I don't believe it. But one man rises above them all. What just happened? He's mad as hell. It's Kevin O'Sullivan. What do we get from our allegedly great institutions? We get a state broadcaster that promises us that in return for an absurdly anachronistic TV tax we're forced to pay for by law, it will deliver scrupulous impartiality. Then the BBC pathetically says sorry to a football presenter who it will allow to carry on going public with his drearily derivative left-wing groupthink opinions. Pay 160 quid for unbiased television and radio and get a middle-class multi-millionaire white guy signalling his dazzling virtue by calling the Tory government Nazis. And, caught in a crisis of its own making, the bungling Beeb grovelingly apologises for trying to stop him. So there you go, the corporation's most sacred contract with the British people, well and truly broken. Meanwhile, what about the police force's contract with the people? Does it include letting more and more cops break the law and remain as officers of the law? Does it include fostering a rampant culture of toxic male sexism and revolting WhatsApp groups making jokes about rape, murder and the traumatised victims of crime? Does it include an understanding that crimes such as burglary, car theft and violent assault will not be investigated by desk-bound rozzers because they're busy patrolling not the streets but the tweets as they diligently trawl through the social media for nasty words in pursuit of ludicrous hate crimes to waste their time on. Does it include an agreement that coppers should record incidents that are not crimes but could be construed as a bit hateful? What the hell is that for? Does it include racing all sirens blazing to a school because an autistic kid dropped a copy of the Quran? No. Long-suffering Brits have never signed up to the new-look left-leaning police force and its reluctance to solve proper crimes and catch criminals. Despite this, senior officers seem solely interested in some old kumbaya claptrap called community relations. The police used to be about prosecuting the bad guys and keeping the streets safe. Now the boys and girls in blue seem to be about painting their patrol cars in rainbow colours to support LGBT rights and dancing the Macarena. In short, they're not doing their job. Six constabularies, including London's flagship Met Police, are in special measures. Everything they do monitored in a bid to raise their abysmally low standards. With rapist cops like Wayne Cousins and David Carrick hiding behind their uniforms and more than a thousand officers in London alone facing charges of dishonesty and violence, especially against women, the streets are a lethal nightmare. A dangerous situation not helped by the fact that a quarter of all coppers do purely clerical work and never leave the police station. No one blames the hard-working, decent officers who are steered in ridiculous, irrelevant directions by woke chief constables lost in political correctness. But when the police demand a 17% pay rise, we, the unprotected public, have a right to ask, what for? What do we get from our Macarena dancing, rainbow car driving, non-crime hate incident recording police force? Not a whole lot. And that is a national scandal. That said, a warm welcome to my special guest tonight, Mark Saggers, of course, sports journalist, broadcaster extraordinaire and host of Talk TV's Sunday Night Club. Welcome, Mark. And also a warm welcome to Russell Quirk, a social commentator, political commentator and also a sometime presenter on Talk TV. Uh, so what, uh, Mark, do we think about the police? I think I made my feelings pretty clear there. I, I don't object to uh, officers, the decent frontline officers, wanting a pay rise per se. Mm -hmm. But I have to reject their request, their pay demand, because the police are not 
delivering what they're supposed to deliver. They should be protecting us and making the streets safe and investigating crimes. And until such time as the police force decides to do that, I don't see why we should be giving coppers a pay rise, do you? Well, that they are public servants. They're supposed to police by consent. Um, I certainly don't consent to the, the reduction in standards of the police force from where I'm sitting, from what I can see. It seems a very, very odd time to me, uh, on the one hand, in terms of them asking for such a monumental pay rise, 17%. It's akin to how ridiculous the, the nurses' uh, 19% was. Um, so it seems a bit odd, given public perception of the police is at an all-time low. But I guess, look, as part of the public sector, they're jumping on the same gravy train as the nurses and the teachers and, this week, of course, junior doctors and so on. Um, and, and, look, we have to question whether it's the fault of the, the top of the police force, the, you know, the woke chief constables and the left-leaning police and crime commissioners. To the public, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where the politics lies in police. At the end of the day, we are being shortchanged by our police service, 100%. And the fact now that we might have to contend with, frankly, a 10% increase in pay for the police, let alone a 17% uh, pay rise, um, it sticks in the throat. Where do you think they're coming from, Mark, uh, these top cops? As uh, Russell quite rightly says, it's the woke top cops who are responsible for this scourge of non-policing. And so we have a police force that's uh, busy dancing the Macarena, paint, painting their police cars yeah. rainbow colours. Well, uh, where do they get off? Where do they think that that's what the public... I, I don't care about... I have people. no idea what the top of these police forces must be like these days. You've mentioned something there that is absolutely getting my goat in many different parts of society. I don't mind anybody having their own beliefs, argue oh, with me and argue with mine. But what I can't stand now are the rainbow laces, the flags, they're draped on all sorts of buildings, their police cars, as we've seen. You know, if you are policing a very big... Uh, crowd, whatever it is, particularly, let's say it's at football. They wash their hands of most of those these days, by the way. It's all stewards inside the ground having to do most things. Yep. And, it, and it ends up being an absolute joke. 17%, quickly, I must say this, 17%. I know they haven't had a pay rise for some time. Is there no way they can be on a percentage for actually either turning up or actually solving some of these well, crimes? Performance-related pay, that'd be nice, wouldn't that, it? That's the point, isn't it, Russell, that uh, these top cops, they, their biggest priority, they're always banging on about it, droning on about it, community relations. I don't give a damn about community relations between the police and the community. I mean, I hope they're good, but I don't really care because here's how to promote good relations between the police and the community. The police investigate the crimes that we're a victim of. If they did that, they'd have good relations, wouldn't they? Yeah, Never so, mind the so, Macarena. So, a, a couple of things I think have happened over the last few years in, in the police force, from what I understand from, um, you know, people in the know, people within the police force. Um, you know, one is this absolute drive for so-called equality and diversity, the, the woke-leaning police <clears throat> now, which, you know, when you start to sanitise and... Uh, sugarcoat everything within the police force, no wonder, then, the police are not as robust and not as effective as previously. The, the other thing that was said to me the other day is that gone are the days now of being a police officer where you start as a PC and you move your way up to sergeant... Yeah. Inspector, Chief Inspector, and lo and behold, maybe after 20 years you become Chief Constable. That simply doesn't happen anymore. What they do is grab someone from Oxford mm. or from Cambridge who's got yeah. a PPE degree yeah. or some, you know, rubbish, yeah. worthless degree in humanities or something, and they stick them in at the top. An assistant commissioner. Well, and, and they course, start almost yeah. at yeah, the top. Yeah, but they've got this stupid, woke yeah. rule book, it seems. Well, let, let's tick a few boxes to well, make sure that we let look... Let me ask you this, Mark. Let me cool. ask you this, sir, Mark. I mean, why are coppers now... Uh, Busily, you know, kind of uh, diligently patrolling the tweets, looking for nasty words mm. to see if they can do people for stupid hate crimes. Mm. But they're not patrolling the streets. That's the problem. Their priorities are all wrong. They're obsessed with hate crimes, recording non-hate incidents. Yeah. That's not a crime. What on earth are they doing Look, this for? Well, I'll tell you what they're doing at the moment. They're also outsourcing these vans to catch everybody speeding, which is just another tax yeah. for most Revenue of us. raising. When you get in a 30 mile an hour and you do 35, they're now going to do you. Yeah. And they're now using 
unmarked vans that they've sought... They're obviously sourced out to other people. Mm. Northamptonshire didn't have many of these. Suddenly, they're all back there. And in Cambridgeshire and in Lincolnshire, they're all at it again. Uh, money raising for their revenues and what have you. But that is about it at times. Yeah. So, and, and now we've got this situation where I, I think it's about 6% of burglaries are solved. Yeah. Um, you know, hardly any rape now is taken through the judicial system of in terms not. of it leading to a conviction. However, what does seem to be happening is that the, the, the kind of... The, the law-abiding majority of us are now being persecuted, as Mark absolutely rightly says. You know, if you're doing 36 in a 30, uh, you can have your life licence and your livelihood, uh, livelihood taken away. Um, and then you get the situation that I had recently. The other uh, bugbear I have about the police is uh, when they do deign to turn up to an alleged crime, about 50 of them turn up, particularly if it's an old lady or someone who's no threat to them. Yeah. So you had an experience, didn't you, recently at the station uh, when uh, you had a dodgy, an allegedly dodgy ticket? I, I did, yeah. I had the audacity to buy a ticket on train line, which is a return for my journey. Oh, yes. uh, on the way back, uh, I was told by the ticket inspector it didn't quite fit the bill because I should be on a whole train rather than something <laughs> with another label or some rubbish. Um, and, of course, you know, like most of us should do, you know, like this show is doing. We stand up for common sense and what's right. So I said, look, I've got a ticket. How many cops? Uh, well, when I got to King's I Cross... I saw the pictures, about I got, five. I got to King's something? Cross and literally <laughs> I was met by four yeah. police officers. Oh, four police ticket. officers. Yeah. And as I got off the train and walked towards them, you know, one of them actually walked to the other side of the platform just in case I did a runner. I'm yeah. thinking, it's a 70 quid ticket. What are you yeah. doing? And, and I was, believe it or not, Kev, I was the bastion of common sense. I was saying, look, oh, I I've got a ticket. That, Here it is. Um, I didn't give them any grief, you know, no aggro. And I just said, look, this is all a bit silly. Should we just kind of move on? I'm sure you've got other things that you might want to be doing. And they stayed with me, the four of them, for 20 minutes. Oh, what, a, what a waste of taxpayers' money. The British Transport Police, mm -hmm. who would rather do that than when travelling fans some of them who are completely out of order, yeah. are in the wrong class, let's say, oh, or yeah. have no tickets. Yeah. They just wave everybody on and away you go because they can't be bothered to well, weed and, them and, out. And very, very, it's so unfair, Very, the very quickly, I was on the way back from seeing a client that is a, a photography client. They just had 20 grand's worth of camera equipment nicked from their studio. Oh, the, the camera <laughs> equipment was had a tracker in it, so they knew exactly where it was. <laughs> the they police rang, didn't do anything. They rang the police and said, it's uh, whatever the address yeah. was. Our staff is yeah. at 15 Acacia Gardens. The police said, we can't knock on the door, it's against the person's yeah. human rights. It's ridiculous. If you're a copper and you're watching this show now, investigate crimes and catch the bad guys. That's your job. Just do it. Time now, though, for a very excellent commercial. My name's Marcus. I work at Robert Dice and I'm gay. I like going out with my friends and playing volleyball. I also like showing our gay and straight customers a funky range of our Christmas gifts. Hi, my name is James. I'm straight and I work at Robert Dyer's. I like sailing, baking and showing off all our Christmas kitchen gadgets to our gay and straight customers. I'm straight and I love shopping at Robert Dyer's. I'm gay and I love shopping at Robert Dyer's. I'm bisexual and I always find something I love at Robert Dyer's. Do you know what I hate about all of that? Yeah. I don't mind what sexuality anybody decides they're Agreed. going to be as long as it's um, not some of these other not um, woke 50, 60, 70 different types of gender. Yeah. But I'm talking, I'm talking it, if you go. But don't tell me you're straight. As long don't as tell me uh, you're gay. Uh, just tell me who you are, a person, and yeah, I will yeah. then make just, a judgment just, just sell on me you a hammer. and <laughs> not by saying to me, you know, I'm gay, follow me round to... Uh, yeah. I think when Robert Dias goes woke, you know that the country's got yeah. a real problem. Well, it's, it's great that you're gay, but in the meantime, could you just sell me yeah, a hammer some and some nails, <laughs> you know, for yeah. God's sake? Uh, let's talk about uh, HS2. Uh, yeah. Last week, uh, the section of this uh, massively expensive rail project that is costing like 200 billion quid, uh, they suspended construction on the bit of it between Manchester and Crewe uh, because they haven't, they've run out of money. But I think this is the beginning of the end for a project that has always been a complete white elephant, if yeah. you ask me. Yeah, it, it, it has. And I've never understood the rationale on the basis that all it's going to do is bring people that live in the West Midlands and the North closer to London. Um, and, and it just seems to make no sense to me whatsoever that that's, that's, that's really not going to help 
you know, certainly not going to help the London economy, is it? Um, there's certainly no value in it being worth 200 billion quid. But, you know, the worst thing is that they've spent the last 10 years or so compulsorily purchasing mm. people's properties. Mm. And they've paid over the, over the odds for them, because, of course, that's the way that compulsory purchase works. Um, so what are they now going to do, albeit that perhaps arguably by accident those properties have probably gone up in value... But, again, by accident. But the cost of this project to now abandon it is going to be absolutely catastrophic. What are they going to do? Just leave the holes in the ground that they've already dug? Yeah. Um, you know, those houses... All the houses they've they pulled down, all the work that they've done, yeah. and they're just let it, letting it sort of... Uh, fade away, yeah. basically. But it's not going to help me. the North, is it? Because all that's going to happen now yeah. is you're not going to work in the North. My point is that you're going to carry on working in London if you're only an hour away from London on a faster train. Yeah. It won't reach the centre of London. Mm. It doesn't matter. There's a decent railways. Can you imagine if we put all that money into the railways as they are, we... we would not have a problem? But exactly, we show... you're exactly right. What, the, what, what this country needed when they started HS2 was actually a really good system of railways linking the North North exactly. to the north, yeah. across ways, exactly. up north and what south. But, but uh, instead, kiss. this massive Y-shaped thing linking them to London. I mean, frankly, what's the big deal? You get to Manchester 20 minutes quicker. So what? Yeah, but let's also rationalise why they've stopped the work. It's to save money. Now, if yeah. we weren't giving, frankly, £7 million... <laughs> to secretly million... secretly end the project, well, No, no, I but think. if we weren't giving £7 million a day, for instance, to house uh, illegal, in the main, mm. uh, asylum-seeking migrants, if we we weren't spending so much money on ridiculous projects, giving half a billion pounds now, as we found out in the last few days, to the French, on top <laughs> of the 200 million we've already given them. If we weren't giving away all of this money, then may maybe we would have the money to complete yeah. that project. Yeah. And all of the people that have had their houses stolen from them on that route mm -hmm. perhaps wouldn't be as miffed as probably they Good are. Week this week. for the French last week. Friday, we gave them half a billion quid for no apparent reason yeah. whatsoever. They'll do nothing to solve the migrant crisis. Uh, and Saturday, they absolutely killed us at rugby, and I had the displeasure to be there at Twickenham. So there you go. Time now, though, for anti-social media. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, <laughs> Kevin O'Sullivan regularly appears on the Jeremy Vine show talking... <laughs> get rid of the... <laughs> now, there's a sort of slight problem with that. I mean, I accept that I probably talk... <laughs> most of the time. Uh, and certainly you could dismiss me as a... But I never, ever appear on Jeremy Vine's show. So whoever sent that to me <laughs> is an absolute... <laughs> Kevin O'Sullivan looks like he's been dragged through a <laughs> hedge backwards. <laughs> being back on the source again is no laughing matter. Who the <laughs> does he think he is? <laughs> what do you mean being back on the source again? I never went off it. <laughs> this show, uh, that's what just happened that you're watching now, this show should be rena renamed Outraged Gammon Corner. Oh. Kevin O'Sullivan is a clown who sounds like he's in denial. In denial of what? In denial of what? <laughs> in denial of the fact that you're an absolute idiot to uh, these That's fools. a great name, on though. Maybe we should read uh, it. Right, uh, yeah. here's tweet number four, another fan mail. Uh, it's good for my ego, this. <laughs> uh, Kevin O'Sullivan needs a <laughs> makeover to help him look a little like Jack... a little less like Jack Nicholson. I don't want that. I like looking like Jack Nicholson, thanks very much. Look. Here we are, tweet number five. What the hell are you trying to say, Kevin? You illustrate the abysmal standard of education in the UK in the 21st century. Learn some <laughs> English. <laughs> <laughs> what a fan base you've got. I love the yeah. way they say you're badly educated because you don't agree with me. Yeah, That's yeah, so yeah. lovely. Whoever that <laughs> is wants me to agree with them. I love it, though, because they're all watching you the whole time. This is a great are. thing. Yeah. And you wonder what they're doing when they're sitting at home. Do you think they're throwing things at the... I know what, I know what they're they thinking, doing? Mark. They're thinking that with their carefully <laughs> constructed little insults that we'll be terribly crushed and unable to continue. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately for them, what we do, as you can see, <laughs> is we laugh like drains at them. Yeah, and they're it's taken them an hour to put the tweet together and they've done it anonymously, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, the point is, uh, if you think I'm unpopular, Mark, you should yeah. see the tweets that Mr Quirk here is <laughs> getting. This uh, is just the last three or four times. It, it, this is just right, over on, the last five minutes. <laughs> right. Uh, what a <laughs> this quirk tube is. <laughs> what we got here. <laughs> this is uh, to Russell. Why do you act Tommy Tough when we know you're just another right wing <laughs> ass? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brilliant. And uh, here's another one. This is to you, Russell. You sad 
retweeting and liking your yeah. own tweet. <laughs> Which I had to. Did you do that? No, I was going to say. No, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, obnoxious Russell Quirk, absolutely vile human being. How you give this man airtime is beyond me. Not just referring to this outburst, never seen this individual be anything else but vicious and spiteful. Horrid man. Well, I'm not going to mention your name, tweeter lady, uh, but, you know, for God's sake, punctuation, grammar, it's how you use the English language. For God's sake, stop being so semi-literate and moronic. And uh, we're off Russell. to a real break now. <laughs> what just happened? Uh, welcome back. We're going to discuss uh, the war on women, or what I think is the war on women at the moment, the increasing cancellation uh, of females. Uh, but uh, before we get to that, we did miss out one tweet uh, that uh, Russell Quirk has received uh, from an, an admiring fan, and uh, I thought it was well worth bringing it to. Uh, Russell Quirk is an extreme right winger who's so hard right he would be a recruiter for the Hitler youth movement. His perverted views have no place in modern society. I agree with that, Russell. <laughs> yeah. Stop more to fans. Me. More fans. More but, um, fans. Yeah, I'll send you next week. Listen, mate, as long as they spell your name right, you're yeah. doing well. Uh, let's talk about women, though. Uh, Chest-feeding people, uh, people with cervixes, people who are pregnant, people who menstruate. Uh, 64 pages of a recent NHS guideline on women's conditions. Mm. We're talking about cervical cancer. We're talking about pregnancy. We're talking about uh, the menopause. In these 64 pages, instructing staff on how to deal with these conditions, they never once use the word women, woman, female or lady. This has got to stop, hasn't it? Well, it's absolutely disgraceful, the whole thing. I have a lovely wife, I have a lovely daughter, I have three sisters. I have people that are real women in my family and they themselves are coming totally fed up with this. You're absolutely right. Losing one's identity mm. because people think they can talk about real women's problems without the definition of being a woman? That is absolutely out of order. Absolutely. It's, I, I am all for trans rights. Everyone should, so be able to, everyone should be able to live their life as they want to, Russell, uh, as long as they don't harm anyone else. Uh, but women are being cancelled. This is sexist. Uh, why can't we use the word woman? Yeah, so I, I read some of the NHS service guidelines today. So there's a, a handbook that goes out to NHS employees that, uh, that work for the NHS. And, and it's remarkable the effort that has gone into degendering everything within yeah. that NHS organisation. So, yeah. specifically, uh, do not use the words Mr, Mrs, Miss. Uh, so, try not to use any gender-related pronouns, instead using they or their, which, of course, are plural, so it's utterly ridiculous. Um, and it, it's just this remarkable effort to try and sidestep the, the biology yeah. of humans. And there's other yeah. stuff in there that talks about the fact that, you know, it, it's... It, you should go out of your way to try and avoid anything that relates to gender because, and I quote, some people may prefer to be a different gender. I get that. I accept that. Mm. Um, some people may decide they have no gender at all. I don't get that. <laughs> um, and some people... You do have a gender. Some people, you do. <laughs> some people, wait for it, it says some people are between genders. No, How on not. earth can you be between genders? And you know the population of Britain that identifies either... Uh, they're a woman but identifies as a man, or the other way around, 0.3%. So we are, we are trying to sanitise yeah. the whole of Britain and all of our public sector for 0.3% of the population. It's nuts. Now, this is what has happened in so many things, isn't it, here? that The, the people that want to cancel everything, they're a small cabal. There's no doubt about that at all. Every woman I know knows that they're a woman or a female. Every man knows that they're a man or their male. Those are the only facts. Yep. That is exactly where we are. And one of the other things, not living in a big city as I don't, most people that you meet in this real wonderful country that it still is with most people is 
Women are quite happy for you if they're carrying loads of luggage to open the door for them. They're quite happy, as I had the other day, an old man who'd had a stroke who couldn't get his card uh, to get some money out in the post office. I helped him and the lady behind the counter as well. These things are still allowed to be done. There's no turning your nose up at most of us for a few manners and everything else. And do you know what you get back from all of that? You get back real people. Yeah. These other people aren't real. They're not real. A lot of them have got a different agenda. I feel for those that don't feel that they're a man in a man's body. The same as I do for a woman. But the real people don't throw it down Well, and we shouldn't have to tiptoe around no. in terms of our own behaviour around others as a consequence of that 0.3%. No. Uh, that, that makes absolutely about, no sense to me whatsoever. What about Keir Starmer and all the Labour politicians lining up last week uh, to pay tribute to International Women's Day? Yeah. And women's... You the know, party uh, that's without, never without, uh, But, but, but uh, these people are unable to define what a woman, a woman is. Nicola Sturgeon, you know, for the record, uh, that bloke, that man man, Isla Bryce, uh, who changed his name from Adam Graham in a way to mm. game the system so he could end up in a nice and cushy female <clears throat> jail. He was a double rapist. He is a double rapist. He is a man. He is not a woman. And I don't know why we dignify well, him And, and Sturgeon's ridiculous title. policy of a man being able to go to a woman's prison was the end of her political career. Yeah. That should tell everybody else in politics that thinks the same as Nicola Sturgeon said she did, that it might be a bit of a false endeavour, mm. surely. Um, and and th the other thing I think is really interesting don't forget, this is all happening under a so-called conservative oh, government. God, a so conservative government. Now, I would never have thought, and I've been in and out of politics, I've been a councillor, I've been politically active for a number of years. Someone mm. had said to me ten years ago, even five years ago, mm. under a conservative government, you will have all of this woke nonsense That's going. Johnson for the, you. Well, no, but this is effectively what we were worried about if we had voted for Jeremy yeah, Corbyn yeah, and yeah. other Labour leaders in the past. Um, I can't really see the difference, frankly, between this Conservative government and what we would have well, had if this was a well, Labour you know, government. You know what uh, George Osborne, the former Tory Chancellor, best mate of David Cameron, is tweeting today and loads of uh, backbench Tory MPs are climbing on the bandwagon that he fully supports what Gary Lineker said about the migrants. So huh. why will the Tory Tories lose the next election, folks, because they're not Tories. Yeah, it's yeah. easy, isn't yeah. it? Well, he was on um, Andrew Neil's Channel 4 show last night saying exactly the same thing. It's just the wannabe Labourites, Yeah, but, but what's interesting is when David Cameron said very, very similar things to Rishi Sunak and Sweda Bravman a few years ago around this being a blight and almost an invasion, uh -huh. not quite his words, effectively, George Osborne was his Chancellor on his shoulder and didn't say a word. But now... Now that they're out of politics, yes, we're now starting to see their true colours, aren't do, we? Do you think, Mark, uh, I, I believe this, if the uh, Tory party, if Rishi and the gang, grasped the nettle and made it a real issue, come on, Keir, define a woman. Mm. Come on, all of you, define... Come on, Angela, define a woman. And if they won't define a woman, then I believe they lose the female vote going into the next well, election. Well, I think they're already losing it. And I, I would Down to say, 11 points now, I, 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 Yeah, and I would say one of the other things that uh, happened this morning that nobody's talked about, it's not about this subject, but it's all to do with this, and I was told, actually, by two women at different times who um, this is actually going to affect, who are working within the new high-tech business, that just quietly today, the government went about the business and made sure that HSBC bought this bust bank Silicon Valley in bank, America yeah. without any fuss or bother. That's the sort of thing yeah. that will help the politicians of the Conservative Party get in. And what they have to do is to weed out the woke from this their side too. Get Cross the floor if you're woke! Get, yeah, get rid of the wokery and stop being woke if you're Tory because that will lose you the next election. And for clarity... A uh, woman is an adult female human. A trans woman is not. End of. End of. Time now for another bad ad. Hello? Jim, it's Susie. Our house is on fire. Can you come over? Of course. I'm on my way. Hello, this is Cal. Cal, this is Mike Case. Hi, what's up, Mike? My boy just wrecked the car. Is your son hurt? Not yet. Hello? Kurt? This is Leonard. I got a business opportunity I'd like to discuss with you. Why don't you uh, meet me in the office in about a half hour? You've, You've got, got friends, friends in the insurance business. business. See, that's a good ad, isn't it? I, I wow. like the first one. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jimmy, the house is on fire. 
OK, I'll come over. <laughs> well, fair, fair play to them for finding the cheapest actors in the world. They were. Actually, one of the I think they're real people. They're <laughs> trouble. Once people watch this, and if they want to just sort of play it back, you'll see John Major answering the phone there in the <laughs> second one. <laughs> I tell you, uh, some of these adverts, particularly from across the pond, are just uh, They're brilliant, phenomenal. aren't they? Uh, but some of ours are as well. You go back in time and you kind of, you know, what they say, the past is a different planet. Uh, and it really is. Uh, and it was much more fun then. But it was. Of course, our adverts now have all gone woke, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. of course they have. 75% of adverts love... have got a mixed race couple in them, of course, totally unrepresentative oh. of the population. How many TV commercials used to feature men wolf whistling attractive women? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't get that anymore. Yeah. Or men you? driving cars. It's never the man <laughs> oh, driving yeah, a car right. anymore. So is the woman. They also um, it used to tell some great stories. They followed on. There was creativity, wasn't there? Well, do you remember the, the famous one was the, um, the Rolo one with the elephant that slaps the guy around the face at the end? You couldn't have that anymore because that would be deemed as inciting violence, cruelty to animals. It's a man, he's white, can't have it. Absolutely. Uh, OK, we're going to do some small town news, sort of local paper stories that have been uh, ah. uh, uh, th thrilling the residents of local areas around the country. Now, take it away. <laughs> First headline, uh, quite uh, prepossessing, I think. Swan kidnapped by drunk man in Plymouth. A swan in Plymouth was kidnapped by a drunk man, man last week, it says. Great story. <laughs> Could be a bit more concurrent, could yeah. you? Uh, <laughs> after a manhunt, the bird was found by Devon and Cornwall police and taken yeah. back in a police car. There's a picture. Hang on. Was it found, found, found in, in, the, found in his kitchen or something? After a manhunt. Yeah, so hunt. It's, it's a swan it's hunt. It's a swan identifying as a man. Yeah, it's a swan it's hunt, isn't it? I, it's I, not know, a man I know hunt. he was obviously drunk and therefore he's kind of, you know, braver than he normally would be. But has he not heard the old story about swans being able to break your arm? I mean, yeah, well, well, very can. brave. I think it's a pocket. The, th the other thing is, of course, remember that the king. Yeah. Now he owns them, doesn't he? We, well, he can actually he can eat claim them. them. No, he Swan can claim them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's true. One. No, that's what it's called. <laughs> really, it is. He can claim them if they're not tagged. Right. And and it is illegal for the rest of us. Yeah, to there's a ceremony the on the Thames every year, the Swan Upmanship. Anyway, uh, let's move on to uh, the next uh, big story. Uh, Scottish mum's anger at McDonald's. That's a Scottish hamburger place, McDonald's. <laughs> Scottish mum's anger at McDonald's after being <laughs> given a half-eaten burger. <laughs> so, a mum has hit out after she was given a burger with a bite taken out of it at McDonald's. The woman ordered a McSpicy burger in Edinburgh on Wednesday, but when she got home, she noticed that a large chunk was missing, and it's a bite-sized chunk. That is socialism personified in a burger, yeah. isn't it? You, know, the world, you give you a little know, bit of what you've got away to yeah. everybody else. There's a difference right. at McDonald's, and it's a difference you yeah, won't yeah. enjoy. It's a muck out right yeah. Yeah. It used to be a fillet of fish yeah. with a bit missing. Fish in Scotland. <laughs> OK, here's another one. Uh, Scottish dog chooses ways of freedom. It's always in Scotland, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, a dog in Fife has been filmed chewing an enormous hole in his owner's front door oh after ripping the letter box off. The dog named Angel has been a very naughty boy. I, uh, we had a dog staying with us once, a uh, friend of mine's dog. Well, they just knocked on the door and you let him in. <laughs> no, B Billy, he was a, a sort of Staffordshire bull he, yeah. but We didn't know how our dog was going to get on with Billy, so yeah. we put Billy in the bedroom and sort of because we went out for a beer or something and get and we put our dog had the rest of the house. Anyway, when we came back, Billy, I said, hang on, what, Billy and uh, 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 Dottie are hanging out together. What, what, I thought we locked him in the door. <laughs> we looked at the door. He had literally Gone destroyed it. it. Really? He destroyed it. He just smashed it to pieces. So that, he's come through the front door, hasn't he? So he's, it, I can see the breed from here. It's a yeah. letter boxer. And the letter boxer. There you go. He's here all week. Good. Very, well very done. Good. Saggers, right. And small town that? news, a man Stack in Manchester spends £4,000 a year bathing only in bottled water. IT consultant John Juna claims tap water is the devil's drink. <laughs> well, it might be. A, it's a drink, though, uh, John, and not, not a, something to buy, bathe in. But what does he do with all the plastic recyclables? I mean, you know, can you imagine? <laughs> one, of the, one of the things, my, my, my mates uh, work for Anglian Water, and we have lots of arguments about water... And the only thing we don't have an argument about is you cannot tell the difference, and there is no difference between tap water and bottles still water in this 
country. Yeah. It is a in con. World. Four grand he's wasting on in that. The, well, it's more expensive than petrol, isn't it? Per ridiculous. Liter? Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Ridiculous, yeah. ridiculous. Uh, we're going to have a real break now, and when we come back, it's the best of bad TV. What just happened? Welcome back, and without further ado, it's time for this. That's uh, Gogglebox in the days before Channel 4 and Colour TV, a much better programme, I'm sure you'll admit. A bit like Match of the Day without Gary Lineker. Uh, so we're going to do the best of uh, bad TV now. And uh, first off, this is Cilla Black's Christmas special for ITV in 1983. And I think you'll agree with me, it's pretty unbelievable. Come on and sing along. We're going to party. Come on, fiesta forever. See, the thing is, that's supposed to be to cele <laughs> celebrate the then new trend for breakdancing. But I've got to say, those kids are seriously crap at breakdancing. They are, they Don't you agree? They definitely want to fire the choreographer. <laughs> Saying that, it's the sort of thing that the BBC put on the telly now, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> One comment from me. Yeah. yeah. So, well, so you get Lionel Richie saying, uh, when I agreed uh, yeah. to let Sella do a cover version of All Night Long, this wasn't what I had in mind. <laughs> All i got to say <laughs> to Sella... Rest her soul. Yeah, I know. Great, great entertainer. Step great outside, man. love. Yeah, oh, it's, great not, it's not a good way to remember her, is yeah. it? No. Really. no. She shouldn't have those kids surrounding her, that's for damn sure. Now, uh, on to... Uh, this, this one dates back to uh, the COVID crisis. Remember that? You know, oh, yeah. when the government was unnecessarily Gosh. locking us down mm. and imposing lots and lots of rules and regulations. We all thought we might die, and these nuns uh, in Kerala, in India, India, were particularly concerned, and they put their concerns and worries to music. Take it away, nuns. Go, go, go away, so Corona. Kevin, we didn't need the vaccine after all. That's a song, all. isn't it? That's we didn't, a song. didn't need the vaccine after all. Perhaps yeah. it was that that made the whole thing well, go away. When I first wrote that song, I, I wondered whether I was up to the job, but I'm very pleased <laughs> with the lyrics now. <laughs> Where, where did Go it, away, Corona! <laughs> where did it get to in the charts? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely nowhere, I'd imagine. But uh, a spirited uh, defence yeah. of the human race there from our nuns in Corona. Uh, let's move on. Uh, this is uh, uh, all about Evelyn from Missouri, who has a strange addiction. My name is Evelyn. I'm 27 years old. I live in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, and I'm addicted to drinking air freshener. I love air freshener. I love it. Absolutely. What I love about drinking air freshener is the taste. There is a million air fresheners out there, but the one that I like is fresh linen. I've tried other scents, but I don't like them. I've got a very serious announcement to make. Uh, ladies, gentlemen, gender fluid people, children, do not try that at home. Uh, have you ever eaten uh, air freshener, Mark? The only thing I've got to say on that, she's got my air wick. <laughs> She's, um, she'll be dead within two years, but her coffin will smell yeah. lovely. Well. <laughs> I mean, uh, we did a story, or was it last week or the week before, about someone who just ate toilet paper. You know, yeah, but what is like, all this All nonsense? day long. These are, this is all that sort of... Uh, that's the, it's like the old days before we had the social media and TikTok and things for these people to do this on. This is just sort of r killing yourself for your minute's fame, <laughs> isn't it? Well, it, it? That's the thing. It's, it's one thing doing it. It's another thing thinking it would be a really good idea to go on the telly and show millions of people that yeah, I actually yeah. do it. That's a great idea. Yeah, hi, I'm Evelyn from Missouri. I'm really, really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so what she did was she, she was walking around the house, apparently, once and sort of yeah. knocked in to the air freshener on the wall and, and, that I thought, was the and I accidentally let off a spurt of it that went into her mouth and yeah. she went mmm that's delicious <laughs> and ever since then she's been eating it yeah not for long I suspect no. 
It's, uh, <laughs> well, I wonder how... I mean, yeah, it must be bad for you. It must well, it's got to have toxins in it, isn't it? Which you think is the worst of the bad TV there? I think it's still a black for me. Yeah, I think in terms of absolute poor production, but I think the air freshener thing gets me. I mean, and the, presuming that girl's got parents, right, that are thinking, that's perfectly OK. Well, she just might even have on. children as well. I mean, well, the maybe, whole thing yeah. was absolutely ridiculous as far yeah, as I'm yeah. concerned. Yeah, but we're going to do him too. Silla for lack of choreography, that was very funny. Yeah, that was. It's quite sad. I felt, felt for everybody involved in that. There was no choreography at all, was there? Uh, talking uh, of feeling for people, let's feel uh, for Frankie and Johnny's in this uh, very, very bad ad. I say, I say, I say, this is Frankie and Johnny's, a place that lets you have it with no problem. I'd like to buy a bedroom set. Do you have any credit? No, I receive Social Security and welfare. You have to see the special man. Let her With no problem. I like to buy a living room set. Do you have any credit? No, I filed bankruptcy. You have to see the special man. Let her have it. With no problem. I say, I say, see Frankie and Johnny, he's the credit man in town. For only $50 down, he can put you in a living room set, a bedroom set today. See the special man. I got the $50. Let her have it. With no problem. I got it, I got it. With no problem. They remove it. Now, see, F and J's furniture, they know their customers. What, yeah, with an APR of just 500,000%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> no deposit. Do you yeah. have any credit? No, I just filed for bankruptcy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, come on well, now. Well, see, Frankie's uh, policy down. is uh, whatever state you're in, financially, yeah, well, right. he's going to give you credit. Yeah. yeah. Well, he is. There's nothing down the back of the sofa. Welcome either. to America. Yeah, but within three months, if you haven't paid for it, we'll come and nick it back in a yeah. lorry. Oh, well, probably, yeah. yeah. I don't exactly know where that is, but it's somewhere I would suggest in the uh, deep south. Deep the south. Moment, <laughs> which is, uh, we were talking earlier about different planets. <laughs> but uh, we like to feature political campaigns. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, this is Vote For Me. Oh. Now, uh, before we play, it's Linda Paulson. She's running for the Senate. Uh, she wants to be the senator for Utah, the Mormon state. Uh, you'll find out why, but she sort of sees herself as something of a rapper... And I thought we'd probably look at the world's preeminent rapper first, Eminem, so we can make uh, a comparison. So uh, take it away, Eminem. Well, he's good, isn't he? That's no. how to do it. Uh, take it away, Linda Paulson. This is how not to do it. My name is Linda Paulson, Republican and awesome. Love God and family and the Constitution. I tried to get another conservative to run. Nobody could do it, so I'm getting it done. I'm pro-religious freedom, pro-life, pro-police. The right to bear arms and the right to free speech. I want less government control and regulation, want to stop and expose all political corruption, where's integrity, morality, accountability. Government programs should lead to self-sufficiency. So you got your vote, Mark? <laughs> He's stunned no, 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 in the I just think, I just think <laughs> that wasn't her first go, right? That was probably a 10th, 12th, I mean, 15th go. She's seamless. I mean, these politicians will be politicians, what? of course. They're surrounded by advisors. What advisor looked at her and went, yeah, this is great. What have we <laughs> Carry just, on. What have we just seen there? <laughs> uh, she's, Literally. She's got, wants to be the senator of uh, Utah. Yeah, well, maybe... And uh, that's her idea of a campaign. That that's her might, idea of well, persuading people to vote for her. Yeah. <laughs> I just get... It just annoys me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just... That's what you're here for. I just can't... I, I just don't get this. Uh, and an extraordinary performance, Russell. Yeah, no, it was great. It, absolutely wonderful. The trouble is, it's now in my head and I don't think I can oh, ever get it out. The pro no. life, the police <laughs> and the constitution. <laughs> <laughs> he was too good at that, It's going to be in my head all the way home. You will be. Thanks. Good, well done. Well, listen to you guys. Uh, it's been a terrific uh, show tonight and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much to Russell Quirk and to Mark. Saggers. Now it's time for a break. What just happened?
Everywhere you look, you see weak people being bulldozed into compliance as they sacrifice their dignity on the altar of temporary peace and harmony. There's BBC Director General Tim Davey completely capitulating to a sports presenter's demand to break the state broadcaster's impartiality rules. And there's King Charles rolling over and letting his youngest son trample all over him. Since they theatrically stomped out of Britain for a staggeringly lucrative new life monetizing their royal status in America, Prince Harry and his wife Meghan's behaviour has been quite simply unconscionable. A textbook lesson in ungracious disloyalty. Day after disgraceful day, the gruesome twosome cash in, lobbing harmful grenades from their $34 million California mansion. Three incendiary years of all-out attacks, branding the royal family racist, accusing Prince William of ruthlessly spinning against them, calling Camilla the villain, dismissing Charles as a distant, uncaring father, mean with his money, a nasty little Netflix documentary series focusing on the Windsor's historical connection to slavery. An even nastier little book full of Harry's stupefying slings, arrows and penile frostbite revelations and a whole lot more. If I was the king, which thank God I'm not, my response would be unequivocal. I would not invite Harry and Meghan to my coronation. That's what, it seems clear, the majority of Brits want for the monarch to stand up to this preposterous pair. But it ain't gonna happen because the king is apparently prepared to get kicked all over the place in a constant stream of hurtful insults and just put up with it. That's His Majesty's prerogative and his right. Of course we understand. This is his son and he's anxious to maintain some kind of relationship. But am I alone in wishing that Charles would make a stand? Insult my wife and my family and you're not invited to my coronation, but invited they will be. And make no mistake, they'll be there like a shot. The attention-seeking duo's presence potentially overshadowing the main event and turning the sacred ceremony into a circus. Then stand by for more excruciatingly unpleasant, bad-mannered interviews from illegal drug fan Harry and self-styled saviour of the world, Meghan. The deranged Duke and Duchess of Netflix might not matter much in the great scheme of things, but in terms of the British royal family, this petulant prince and former cable show actress are inflicting immense damage. Their public bleating and woke whining is destroying the sovereign's all-important mystique. Harry and Meghan have turned the once majestic Buckingham Palace show into a tawdry soap opera. Not so much Coronation, more like Coronation Street. It would be nice and arguably prudent if the king expressed the displeasure he obviously feels, put his foot down and exiled this carping cartoon couple from royal life. But he's never going to do that. So get the paparazzi cameras ready and get set for a coronation starring an ungrateful aristocrat and his moaning missus on a mission to destroy. Good King Charles can bow and scrape to horrible Harry and mean Meghan if he wants to. But please excuse me if I don't. Thank you and good night. What just happened? Introducing Mike and Kevin's ice cream for snowflakes. Indulge in our deliciously sanctimonious flavors such as Extinction Raspberryan. Cancel culture and cream, cookie double warming, non binberry, woca cola, ginger nut, and vanilla. All made from our organic gender fluid. Mike and Kevin's ice cream for snowflakes.